we're going to start with Maya and Hair, which is a realistic hair or curve based dynamic simulator built on top of the Nucleus framework. Nucleus is Maya's unified simulation framework, so what this means is NHair is fully integrated with the other N modules, such as N cloth or N particles. This allows it to bi directionally interact with these other modules. So we're going to be using this to generate a hair system on my girl. I want to make a ponytail that's dynamically solved using NHair, and this is very fast and easy to do inside of Maya. All I have to do is grab a piece of geometry and create an NHair system from it. If we start our playback, you'll see that obviously that hair begins to drop down, and that's because the Nucleus node has a gravity system built into it. Notice that it passed right through the back of the girl, as well as the fact that the hair isn't really preserving any volume. So those are the first two things that we want to address. We'll just grab this piece of geometry, and we'll create another N object from it. In this example, just a passive collision object. Now if we start our playback, you can see that that hair comes down, and it'll bounce right off the girl's back. So problem one has been solved. The next thing that we want to do is we want to start using some of the in hair attributes to massage the overall look and feel of this ponytail. And this is very easy to do. The first thing that we're going to do is turn on self-collision. And this is one of the advantages that in hair has over the classic hair that was included in Maya previously. The collision engine is much faster than it used to be, as well as much more sophisticated. It can do things like collisions based on edges, as opposed to just vertices. As soon as we turn on self-collide, you can see that that hair kind of puffs up, and that's because of this self-collision thickness that we have. Now we can use that in conjunction with some of the classic modifying tools that the hair system has inside of Maya to adjust the overall look and feel of this. So if we increase the clump width and start to use this ramp modifier to adjust the, the shape of that hair down the length of it, we can start to get maybe sort of near the root, it's very thin, and then it kind of puffs up in the middle and sort of tapers back off. So using these basic tools to massage or finesse the overall look and feel of this hair system is very interactive, and we get this really nice look and feel to it extremely quickly. I'll just use a preset to further dial this in. So we change the color, and I puffed it up a little bit more and made it a little bit thicker. So the next thing that we want to do is use some of the constraints to help us further style this hair. When working inside of any of the Nucleus modules, you have a series of unified constraints, fields, and forces that you can work with. And this really helps you learn the tool. So if you know how a constraint works with N cloth, it's going to work very similar with N hair. So what I want to do is I want to constrain the end of this hair, so we'll grab the end vertices of those hairs, and I'm going to create a new end constraint. And this is a pretty simple constraint, it's just a simple transform constraint. So obviously if we play this back, those points are going to be stuck in space. And I can use this transform constraint to start to do some pretty fun things to help me style the hair. If I start to want to maybe introduce some twist down the length of that hair, Notice that the volume is preserved. If I start to interactively move this back and forth, you can see that very complex self-collision interaction that's happening with that volume being preserved. So another thing that's worth mentioning is all of these constraints have a glue strength. And this is a threshold, so once that threshold gets exceeded, that constraint can turn off. So if I start to drop this down, you can see that that hair starts, starts to sort of peel away. Maybe I grab my character and start to interactively move her around here, I'll break that last little bit. So in this example, what we're doing is we're actually moving a human IK system, so this is a full body inverse kinematics rig that we're updating in real time, very, very sophisticated self collisions happening as well as that collision with that passive in object, and it all happens basically in real time, and you can see the quality of the solve that we get is, is really, it's pretty, it's phenomenal. So let's go ahead and reset this, and we'll talk about the last thing that we wanted to uh, highlight with the in hair system, and that's the ability for it to interact with other in objects in the scene, such as in particles. So let's go ahead and get our in particle system in our scene. Let's go ahead and create a simple emitter, an omnidirectional emitter that's spitting out water particles. Let's go ahead and, looks like I didn't get that guy. Let's say create an emitter. Let's go and position that guy up here, and we'll play this back. So as this plays back, you can see obviously that emitter is kind of coming down here. It's starting to add a little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, particles into the scene. Some of those particles are getting stuck on that hair. If I move this girl around, you can see the bi-directional nature, so those particles start to get pushed around by that hair. We can also use those end particles to actually start to break this hair. So let's go ahead and change some of the attributes on these. We'll just go to the end particle shape. I'm going to turn it into a, a stream of water, essentially. And what we'll do is we'll just grab that emitter. position it over here, go to the interactive playback mode. So we've got that constraint. I've already dialed down the weight of it, but you'll notice as I start to pull this in emitter across that hair, as those particles are kind of a little bit heavier now and they start to interact with that hair, you'll really get a sense of here they come, they hit the hair, 
and they basically break that constraint as I wipe across here. So this really clearly illustrates the power of these bidirectional natures between in particles and hair using the in constraints to sort of tag that hair up there to hold it back in the beginning. And that's what it's like to work with the new in hair system inside of Maya.